Today, we're gonna to take a look at the latency of the Genki Shadowcast, this little device that I recently reviewed and then got tons of questions, which was, well, what about the latency? What about, what does it feel like when I press a button and the action occurs on the screen? Is there any lag or perceived lag, we should say? I'm gonna answer all that question and do a review across my Windows machine with the Genki software, with OBS, a MacBook M1 device and a Surface Go device so we can see how it performs across all of the different devices. So tune in. All right, so what are we talking about today? Well, the Genki Shadowcast I recently reviewed. Check it out up over there. I'll put a little you know thing that flies out or you can see it below. And what I said is that it's a pretty great device for $50. I was a Kickstart backer. And what it does is it enables you to capture a HDMI device. They market it as the Nintendo Switch capture or Xbox or PlayStation, but you can use it with anything. For example, you could use it with a GoPro or a DSLR, or in fact, on some of my videos, I've actually casted my MacBook to my Windows device to capture it. Now you can use other devices such as Elgato capture devices, or like I'm using right now on my GoPro Hero 4 is the Cam Link. Now the Cam Link from Elgato is about over $100, whereas this Genki Shadow Cast actually is just $50. Now what's nice about this is that there's also software that you can install on your Mac or Windows machine to capture and play back that in performance mode or in graphics mode. Now, in my review, I said overall, I had a really good experience playing Zen Pinball. And in fact, since then, I've played hours upon hours of Fortnite and other games on it. And overall, the experience has been good. Now, I'm on a very sort of powerful machine that I record all my videos on, but that may not be your experience. So what I wanted to do today is start off by taking the perceived or the perceived latency here of pressing a button or moving the controller here on the device and then having it relay to your eyeball, right? Now, on different devices. So I'm gonna do it on, on my main device here with both OBS and also the Genki software, my MacBook Air, which is an M1 device, and then also my Surface Go device as well. Now let's talk about perceived um, latency, if you will, because latency would literally mean that there is a lag or the delay from when you press a button from the action occurring in the game. Now. This can mean that there is like Bluetooth lag, or if you're on Stadia that perceive that, hey, my button click is going up to a server, and then that's where it performs and takes the button click and there's calculations. Um, a lag would occur if I was talking and the audio is out of sync because the audio is lagging behind my video. And that is something a capture card could actually have an issue with. Now, the thing is, when I press a button on my switch, it's not relaying it to the shadow cast, right? The shadow cast is just passing through the HDMI output and then capturing it and displaying it on your screen. So it's really a perceived latency or lag or, um, you know, issue that you may have, which is that you press a button, it relays it to your switch. And then the switch is a second or half a second behind on the display that the software is outputting. So what this means is that when you see something and let's say Zen pinball, a ball come down, your natural reaction is to press it, but you're actually seeing a second or half a second or millisecond or whatever it is later than what's actually occurring. So that lag is the video lag, not the button press lag. There's no button press lag because you're sending it to your switch just like you always have. So let's first start off over here on my desktop PC. And we're gonna take a look at what this actually means to have perceived lag. So let's check it out. All right, so we're first gonna start here on my main PC. I'm gonna use the Genki Arcade software and I'm in the normal performance mode. And I can just click around the, the switched user interface and it's pretty solid, I would say. There's not really any perceived lag there at all. Um, but let's go into Zen Pinball FX. And again, this is my desktop PC. It's the, my main PC that I use for all my video editing. And gaming on, it's an i7, 6700K, 64 gigs of RAM and a GTX 980. Not crazy, crazy new, um, but also relatively decent machine. Um, and again, we're in the normal performance mode and we're going to play Pinball FX3. It's one of my favorite pinball games and mostly because you want, you know, it to be one to one. When you click that down, you want that to be instantaneous. And as you can see, there's really no perceived lag at this point. Let's flip it into the power, you know, graphics mode or whatever you want to call it. 
And here you can actually see that flipper. There's a little kind of ghosting on it. It's a little bit, um, uh, a little bit of ghosting as far as the frame rate's a little slower, but, um, all in all, it's pretty solid. You know, it's, it's really hard to one, get this controller sort of up in the right place. So you can see it and also to play this game. But when I'm flipping through these modes, I, I mostly pref prefer performance mode in general, uh, just because it seems smoother with a higher, f you know, frame rate coming through. But yeah, you can see that it's pretty spot on. I'm not really having a hard time, not having a hard time playing this at all. And when I play pinball FX, I'm usually planning my move out just a little bit ahead of time. Uh, let's jump over to just super Mario brothers. You know, this should be good. Ideally you can see me jump and then I can jump and it's you know, pretty much one-to-one -one. here. Again, I'm in the normal performance mode. Uh, let's just go ahead and play a little bit. I'm in a super awkward position. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. And this is the uh, uh, arcade version, so it's it's not uh, like the Lost Levels or you know original one. It's it's this weird funky mode. I'm not a huge fan of the arcade version of it. The setup because all the buttons are weird. I just kind of want to play. Uh, but yeah, now I'm in now I'm in the uh, other mode. It, you know, again, this mode, the graphics mode, does feel a little bit slower. In general, you can see I died there. So um, for me, it's. Again, I wouldn't play at this performance mode or no, in the, in the graphics mode, I play in the performance mode, but like the, as far as jumping and moving, it doesn't feel super delayed, like, uh, in general, but again, you know, I am kind of having a hard time moving left and right. So it's not perfect, but I also think the arcade version is a little bit off in my opinion. Um, but we'll see me play this game multiple times throughout this, this video. So we'll see if it gets any better, uh, in general. So again, I'm moving around, jumping around, doing the things. You can kind of see me move around. It's pretty decent. Um, again, I like the performance mode. That's the mode that I would go in. Now, that being said, there's other ways to capture this. So let's maybe just put it in OBS. So if you're going to be streaming, you can select the shadow cast right in here and it'll just show up. Now, you don't have any control over the graphics mode or not, uh, but again, this is on my main machine and, uh, ideally it should just be putting out it for the, the legit full frame rate of whatever it's going. And if we go ahead and jump, you know, it's probably similar to the graphics mode over in, uh, in the, the Genki software, I would say, uh, feels pretty good, you know, ah, again, Again, an awkward, awkward position here to be playing, but you know, maybe I wouldn't die as much if I had it on the normal screen. So it's hard to say. Um, but yeah, I think overall, this is one way of capturing it. Maybe not the most ideal way of doing it, but it depends what you're playing too, I would say. But if, as you can see, I kind of like go left and go right, and it's pretty much spot on. So it's, it's really hard. I don't really see any huge crazy delay. All right, and then also, you know, I can load up you know, pinball effects again as well. And I can obviously see that it's pretty much, pretty much one-to-one -one as we can see, as we saw earlier. Now, another way of capturing video is to do a window capture. This is something else that you could do. So if you wanted to use the performance mode, for example, you could uh, bring up the Genki software over here and then do a window capture. So you can see I'm actually doing a window capture on the uh, left hand side. So there we go. So I'm kind of switching sources over here, but there we go. And now I have my full Genki arcade. So I have my performance mode, my non-performance mode, and I could work around this. And again, now we're back to our one-to-one, -one, just capturing a window. So that might be the ideal way of doing it if you're doing OBS in general there. All right, on to the next machine. Let's head over to my MacBook Air. This is an M1. What's nice about this is that this is actually using a pure USB-C to USB-C connection. And uh, previously we were doing a, a normal USB to USB-C there. So uh, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and um, boot it up on my MacBook Air. The, I'm noticing that there's a lot of different uh, things that you can do here, like screen capture, turn on video, turn on microphone. Uh, this isn't available in the Windows version, so it's special on Mac. And you actually download it from the App Store, which is very nice. Um, one thing I'll say is my screen's a little dark here, so it, it's actually a lot lighter, but I have my brightness turned down. So unfortunately there's, there's that, but, um, it is coming through very crisp. So ideally you're kind of seeing that I'm just playing, you know, 
pinball facts on my MacBook Air M1 and uh, pretty much plays good overall. Um, and that's in the resolution. Again, I always prefer this performance mode. I'm just, I just want the, the best frame rate mostly. And the graphics are really, really good uh, still. So it's, it's not a one-to-one -one if you're hooking it up directly to your monitor out, out of your Nintendo Switch or something like that. But if you wanted to capture some footage and or you were on the go and you didn't have a TV, this would be a nice uh, solution for you to hook up. So yeah, as we can see, I'm just playing some pinball effects and attack attack from Mars. So we're there. And ideally from this angle, hopefully you can kind of see me click down, right? And go, even though I just got in the gutter, uh, which is great. Uh, so I'm just gonna play a little bit more here. You can kind of see it play out on the MacBook Air. I'm not gonna test it on OBS. I haven't installed OBS on my M1 MacBook Air, but my assumption is it'd be very similar to the Windows version of far as capturing this uh, video footage. Uh, and then you could also do the screen capture as well. But if you were just on the go, you wanted to plug this in, this is nice. The, the nice part about this, like I said earlier, is that it's USB-C to USB-C uh, in general. So again, you can switch between these two modes here. And uh, yeah, it's pretty solid uh, overall. Uh, we'll kind of watch me play it out here. And again, I, I still think that the, the graphics mode, as you can see, has a little bit of I'm not going to call it slowdown, but it, it is a lower frame rate than the performance mode, which makes sense. Now, the real test, though, I think overall is on this Surface Go. This is a Gen 1. It has 8 gigs of RAM on it, and it's the Pentium Gold processor. It does have a USB-C adapter on here, which is nice. So you can just plug in USB-C, and it just shows up just like that. Let's go ahead and toggle through. This, this to me, is the real test because this is the lowest powered machine that we're going to test uh overall uh on this on this setup here today so ideally you can kind of see me just get ready uh to play some zen pinball effects there we go and there we go you get a little bit of me a little bit shinier this display but we're good so yeah there we go so you see the little flippers are flipping around down there and boop, good to go i will tell you this much while I was uh, doing the f first shoot of this video, my Service Go decided to update uh, in the background. I hadn't turned on this machine in probably six months. So I was doing all the Windows updates. Uh, when it, that did happen, uh, it did dramatically stutter when I was playing Mario and playing Pinball FX. So I ran all of the updates on my Surface Go. It was fully up to date, so nothing else happening. And this is w this footage that is captured. This is my second go at it. Um, so there's, there's nothing else running really on these machines when I'm playing this, which would make sense. You don't want, you know, you don't want anything to hinder it, but I, I will note that when there was a windows update happening in the background, it was definitely hindering it quite a bit, but yeah, I pretty much don't see any real big difference between me playing on my service go and my MacBook and on my main desktop machine. I would say all in all, it's a solid setup. I, I really like this, this setup, because if you were walking around just with your, your, um, you, you had your dock with you and your switch with you, and you wanted to simply, you know, get a little bit of bigger display while you're on the road, this would work fairly nice without having to like hook it up to a TV or you're somewhere else. Let's go back over to the, uh, super Mario. Uh, this will be quite fun. So we will go ahead and boot up this original mode. So if you've never been, seen this before, this is the arcade, arcade archive. So the same game I played earlier, I can never remember how to put in coins or credits or whatever they call it. It's to me, it's too long. Just let me play the game. That's what I like to say. Just let me play Mario. Look at me trying to click on buttons. It's fantastic. All right. So here we go. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to jump around and jump. Jump. And, you know, everyone's perception of I like how I die right away too. everyone's perception of lag. This is me in real life too. <laughs> Terrible at video games. Uh, everyone will also perceive this a little bit different. So if you're very, very sensitive to any input perceived lag at all, and you need a one-to-one -one connection, then probably no capture card or unless a high-end one is going to be for you. Um, you know, I would probably stay away from the the shadow cast or the cheaper end ones. You maybe want like a, a full blown Elgato, uh, 
you know, capture card, like an HD 60 or something like that. That's going to do additional processing on the actual board where this is just kind of doing this pass through and there's some software processing going on here, uh, in general. Now I'm not even going to attempt to put this in performance mode because, uh, just no real, I mean, in graphics mode, it's in performance mode now, but no real reason to kind of switch it over. Cause I don't think it can get any crisper than this on the screen. So I think overall it's pretty solid, but let me just play through this level and I'm just going to play fast just like I normally would. I think before I was kind of slowing down, trying to, to do stuff, but I think this is probably a more better accurate representation. There you go. Well, there you have it. That is the shadow cast. Wait, why am I wearing a different color shirt? Like what, what's going on? Okay. Well, I actually ordered a HDMI micro cable to HDMI adapter, and that is going to enable me right now to use my shadow cast with my GoPro hero Four. this is a, another use case where you want to do a DSLR or a GoPro or some other device and use it as a webcam or HDMI out to your computer. And that's what this does. I usually use my cam link. That's what I was using in the beginning of the video. And we wanted to see if there's any audio lag. So I'm not editing any audio here. I'm not shifting anything. This is the actual pure video source. And of course the audio source as well. In fact, I will splice a side by side right here of me using my cam link earlier. And you can see me talk here from the beginning of this video. But like I said, the Shadowcast is a pretty nice device for $50. Um, it's not doing a lot of, you know, stuff on the actual tiny chip there. It's passing that HDMI across, but the Genki software is very good for enabling that high performance mode. And I feel very confident of playing games like Fortnite or Zen Pinball or anything else like that with that. We've tested it, of course, on my main rig right here. Um, we've tested it on an uh, MacBook Air M1 processor and a Surface Go original model as well. All different spectrums of CPU and hard drive and all the different things. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, leave them down there. And always don't forget to like this video if you want to see more things like this. Of course, recommend it to other people. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more tech goodies and software development tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.